Give me money, give me money, give me money, give me money, give me money. I'm Batman. Batman returns. Batman forever. There is no stopping the Batman. I saw the Teen Titans Go movie with my little brother, and it was actually pretty good. Now, as much as I love to tell everyone how crap Marvel Comics is right now in comparison to DC Comics, with some cool concepts and some hilariously bad writing, I won't be talking about that. Instead, I'm going to be honest and say Cloak and Dagger is one of the worst Marvel TV shows I've ever seen. Now, I know the Inhumans have been cancelled because it sucked, and I haven't seen the Inhumans because it looks stupid, therefore I didn't watch it, but Cloak and Dagger is really, really bad. Now, I can talk about why it's bad for maybe 30 to 40 minutes, but let me cut it down to a few minutes. Short story long, Social Justice Warriors. Look, life isn't that bad, okay? Where do you live, Tyrone? Good house, good neighbors, you go to a good school. You don't know me. I'm sorry that your two living parents care about you so much. Must be a real drag sway. What, you gonna teach me how to lie? You gonna teach me how to be a con man? Let me check your privilege. 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 Nani? <laughs> I was just dropped off by a cop who told me that I can't press charges against a guy who almost... NANI? I've had a lot of things taken from me. And everything I have, I've had to steal because... Because you can! NANI? You can walk into any room in this world and never be questioned. Try walking into a department store looking like me. That's not fair because I don't the think- The world does! Right. We went in a battle together, no matter the weather, we never delayed. You gave me commands, I always obeyed. I never let you go astray, I never thought I'd see the day that you would come and just betray me. Sick of playing silly games, you never love me anyway. You should not have let me get away, cause now I'm hunting for my prey. I'm bigger, I'm better, my mind is a weapon. I won't ever let up and try to break me down, and I'ma just get up there. Ask me how I did it, I'ma just tell them I rose up. I'ma survive, I'ma Fight for my life. We might be teenagers, but look how fucked up we are. I remember Olivia Holt used to be on this TV show called Kicking It with Leo Howard, and all they did was have karate and a bunch of fun, but she swapped her role for that just to be this drug addict teenager on this show. But I know what everyone's thinking right now. Is this as bad as Supergirl? You know, I never really noticed Clark having to get his rage on. Because he's a man. And girls are taught to smile and keep it on the inside. Well, it's not like black men are encouraged to be angry in public. Well, then this will work for both of us. <clears throat> About that one email. The one where you said I was the walking personification of white male privilege? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, obviously, you're more of an ally than I thought. I want to work for a cool, powerful, kick-ass woman instead of a bunch of angry old white men. If you're not going to be here to handle my calls, Kira, then I suggest you just keep walking and throw yourself off the balcony. I know you think your mom is this heartless, narcissistic monster. You just keep walking and throw yourself off the balcony. But when you get past that, there is this inspiring person in there. A hero. Throw yourself off the balcony. Not by a long shot. However, this show isn't even a show about superheroes, and the real villain of the entire show is racism and injustice, which in my mind translates to evil just to be evil and corrupt just to be corrupt for the plot's sake. And of course this leads into my favorite villain archetype, evil white businessman with a political agenda that only benefits him, 
<laughs> this trope is so oversaturated and so overused. I should have a counter going on all my videos how many times it's being used in anime, manga, any live action television series. I mean, what the hell happened to just Robin Banks? What happened to that? Now we got social justice and gender studies in our superhero TV shows and comics, which nobody really wants. The problem is, is that the writer is so entranced with writing their own political gender narrative, while they also quote unquote empower their feministic characters and black characters, they forget this is a superhero television show, and the narrative is shot to hell making you wonder, why do they even have powers in the first place if they're beating everyone with their social justice political agenda? There's even a scene in this television series where they literally rip it from DC Comics and puts it in reverse. You heard about the woman being shoved in the fridge trope? Well, this show wanted to do, instead of us killing the woman, we're gonna kill the man and we're gonna shove him in the fridge. Then we're gonna have the woman go to a bar and have an emotional breakdown and wail on some angry drunk men just to brute out her frustration. It's really stupid. And it's like the worst character arcs ever. It would be okay if it was a good character arc, but it's the worst character arc ever. Listen, it's okay to incorporate politics into your story, but when it's just evil just to be evil, and to serve the plot nothing more for that reason, it's beyond stupid. Now, an example of good politics in a television show is Arrow Season 6. You know why? Because the main character is the mayor of an entire city, so politics are naturally asserted into that role and position. So you can have episodes about gun control, you can have episodes about how these certain groups of individuals feel like they're demonized in the city, you can have all the stereotypes with that plot in mind. And cyberpunk is the other exception where you can have evil just to be evil characters because it's cyberpunk and cyberpunk explores existentialism so you pretty much kind of need it now what cloak and dagger does and what it pretends to do to be different than any other tv show is by reversing the roles of the stereotypical characters in a stereotypical fashion meaning the black guy is super rich while the white chick is supposedly super poor but that's completely false because the white chick has over a couple thousand dollars hidden in the statue which was revealed in episode 9 which is the worst meta contextual episode ever by the way, but continuing what I said, Dagger has free housing and clothes that doesn't fit her quote unquote poor person thief status persona and also has so much privilege it's so condescending when she tries to be socially and politically correct having more money than me i mean seriously if she's so poor why the hell is she wearing those expensive shoes and those expensive ass clothes well the answer is simple it's because she's pretending to be poor you see the entire backstory of dagger in the show is she's not even fucking homeless she ran away from home because her mother's husband died and the mom's obsessed with getting justice for her dead daddy and on the side of the mom, she drinks alcohol and has sex with lawyers so she doesn't have to pay any lawyer fees because she can't afford it. Unable to cope with this and not be able to have any basic human communication skills, she ran away from her home because, well, she just, I don't understand why she ran away from home. I guess she couldn't emotionally take it or something like that, I don't know. And the mom doesn't even seem to give a shit. She has no police reports filed or anything like that. She just says, oh, you know, my daughter's missing, so, uh, no, I'm not gonna look into that any further. So, getting into the clip some more. So, here's this character crying about how she was almost beaten in a rage for no reason, when the reason why is so clearly obvious why all these bad things are happening to her. Throughout the 10 episodes of Cloak and Dagger, Dagger is nothing but an obnoxious brat that lies, cheats, and steals to every person she knows and meets. And there's this one part of the show when she literally breaks into this corporation where she being rocks on oil and as she goes throughout it, she gets a job interview that she's not supposed to be at and she pretends to be this assistant's intern this entire time. After faking her position for like two episodes, the nice Asian lady actually gives the teenage kid a fucking job because she was truthful about the entire situation she was in. She's telling Tyrone to check his privilege, you did nothing and got a fucking job, so how about you check your privilege? And the worst part about the entire show is she doesn't even keep the job but she continuously shows up there just to steal crap and the chick allows it it's horrible in addition to all that she's also a drug addict 
as we see in the clip, and she upgrades her addiction from doing drugs to literally stealing people's hopes and dreams of her supernatural abilities, which is beyond fucked up. Considering her victims no longer feel joy in what they do in life anymore, it makes you actually wonder, is she really the hero, or she's the villain of the entire series? But of course, she get wet, and that's the only thing that matters in the series. As so long as Dag is happy, pretty much everybody's happy. So, going back to her almost getting violated, the answer to the question of who's checking whose privilege is, she best check her own privilege before she goes on criticizing other people with all the crap she gets away with, and the story doesn't even punish her for it, handing down zero consequences whatsoever. She breaks into places and steals stuff, she sits there and steals food and all this other stuff, and there's zero punishment or consequences. In fact, she gets rewarded for it. It's messed up. Now, the answer to what you're saying is, well, she was almost raped, therefore, hey, that's a consequence, right? Right? Well, the answer to that is simply no. Now, despite how horrific rape is and the violation and sexual harassment of women is and can be, as I talked about in my various Goblin Slayer videos, which is a horrible manga and a horrible anime, I can come to the conclusion when it comes to this particular show that the very fact that Dagger almost got raped and beaten and brutalized, in all honesty, I don't care. And let me explain why I don't care. So, not only are both Cloak and Dagger teenagers that are angsty and edgy with fucked up problems for some reason that shouldn't exist, but both of them have obnoxious issues of their own that make both of their characters very distinctively annoying. Dagger is literally the worst character ever. She is literally the villain of the entire show, but the showrunners and the screenwriters and the directors are so hell-bent on trying to paint her as the hero, they can't see the protagonist is really the villain. So the entire deal with her character is, and the reason why she was almost beaten and raped was, simply due to the very fact that Dagger is a thief. Now what the TV show literally goes out of its way to explain is, Dagger does this on a multitude of occasions, before the show, during the show, and after the show, meaning she's done this on a numerous amount of occasions. So this is what she does. She goes to parties, seduces men she feels that are rich or have certain privileges, she doesn't, and goes back to their house promising them sex, when in reality, she roofies them, and when all the men wake up, all their shit's gone. Now I know what you're thinking. Doesn't that seem a little bit extreme to you? She stole from you, so you beat the hell out of her and rape her? Well, yeah, it is kind of extreme, but look at it this way. These guys lost all their shit. Dagger is such a pro thief, she literally has a crew on standby that come into the house and just clean it out. And when I say she cleans it out, she cleans out everything. The jewelry boxes, everything that looks valuable, the paintings, every little thing. She even takes the fucking silverware. She literally cleans out these houses. She even boosts cars, man. So here's this kid to cry and rape and how she felt like she's violated, but here she is stealing from people and wondering why all this bad shit happens to her. Get that bullshit out of here! It's plainly obvious why this is happening to you. And the plotline gets dropped, so I don't know why she's crying, even though the clips in episode 4, that character that almost beat the hell out of her and raped her, he doesn't even show up ever again, and nor of his boys or his crew, they don't even show up. Now, getting into Cloak, you must be wondering, what is his problem? Well, for one, he's black, which according to this story means he suffers through every evil injustice imaginable. Two, naturally he has all the problems with his parents even though he's rich as hell. Even though his parents are amazing understanding people, for some reason he just doesn't sync well with them because he's growing up. When I see the scenes with the parents, I'm looking at this and I'm saying these are some good ass pants. Finally, some good pants, doing the best they can, but here's this kid who is bitching about his curfew, bitching how he has too much money, bitching about how he doesn't want to do this or do that, he's a spoiled little asshole. And the third and final problem is, his brother is dead. So the show tries to explain for close character, is that the reason why he's so fucked up is because his brother died right in front of him. Now, this is where the evil just to be evil character villains begin to rear their head into the story. 
but because this is a SJW TV show, there is a logical explanation for why his brother is dead, and multiple ways his death could have been possibly avoided if the characters had a little bit more common sense. So the reason why Cloak's brother is dead within the show from the perspective of that character is because his brother is black. Now you must be wondering if I'm joking or not, but I don't think I need to play that clip again for you to understand why he ultimately believes this. And of course because he's black blah 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 that ultimately signed the death warrant of the brother. Now in reality both of them were stupid and if one of them were actually smart nobody would be dead to be completely honest. Anyway, the backstory goes like this. At night, while wearing a black hoodie, the little version of Cloak decides to steal some guy's radio because he wanted to look big in front of his friends and didn't want his brother to look like a pussy in front of his hood rat friends. The older brother finds out and he gets pissed about this and chases the little brother, talking him out of it, but it's too late. He already stole the radio. Anyway, a pig shows up, doing his job patrolling the streets, sees these two kids in black hoodies crouched over a place looking real sketchy and he asks both of them to stop to ultimately question them. So guess what they decide to do at this particular time while wearing black hoodies in the middle of the night. They decide to run away because that's the only thing that we could have done at that particular moment. We could have took the hit for it and maybe went to the police station and maybe we could have sorted this out with some sort of settlement or something like that but nah we gotta run away because we're black. Anyway, the older brother gets shot because some explosion happened in the background and the cop accidentally reacted to that and he shot the black kid. And because that happened, all his evil cops with all their evil corrupt friends who were also old white men who were also drug runners scheming in the background to make sure their evil just to be your friend doesn't go to jail, makes it look like, hey, the kid died and there was nothing could have been avoided to stop the death. Anyway, long story short, basically all the cops, because they're evil, decide to discredit the little kid, that's Cloak. I don't know how they managed to do that, considering he saw the death firsthand, and he was literally 10 feet away when he saw his brother die and fall into a pool, and the story doesn't even go out of its way to explain how they do that, but hey, they got connections, I guess. But the majority of the show is Cloak wants justice for his brother. Even though not once throughout the show does he even admit that he's the direct reason why his brother is dead. If he wasn't a dumbass trying to act cool by stealing a radio, then running away from a police officer with a black hoodie on at night, just maybe, just maybe, his brother wouldn't have been shot and killed. Wanna know how I know this? Because, well, you see, I'm black! And because I have common sense, I've pretty much figured out that if I follow the rules like any normal American citizen, and not do things that I'm not supposed to be doing like, I don't know, stealing, jumping radios, stealing people's tires, and a bunch of other shit that I know that by common sense you shouldn't do by law, and especially wearing a black hoodie at nighttime and running away from the police, you won't be shot at and killed. Mm. So overall, Cloak and Dagger is a terrible show. Not only do the characters not even admit their own fault, they constantly justify what they do and why they do it while affirming themselves and not owning up for any of their actual mistakes in the story. They just drown out all their problems with drugs, music, and a bunch of other things they shouldn't be doing. It's clear that Cloak's entire problem is he can't get over the trauma of his brother dying, but like I previously said, he's unwilling to admit that he was directly associated with his brother dying. If he followed the rules like his parents told him to and not be hanging out with those hood rats and trying to act cool in front of them and trying to impress everyone but the very fact that you can steal a car from a radio, maybe he would have never died. The entire problem with Dagger is that because she doesn't want to have any human interactions with her actual mother and actually try to get her any freaking help and stop her from being an alcoholic and dating all these men, Maybe her situation would be better, but nah, I'm gonna run away from home, I'm gonna be a thief, I'm not gonna get in trouble for anything that I do, and I'm just gonna be this sassy teenager that does whatever the hell I want, and I'll get away with it. You know why? Because I'm the main character. For all the jargon they want to put in this show, and all the gender politics and the politics and gender, all the racism and all the blah 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 they put in it, here's my question, why hasn't Dagger been arrested? 
Why hasn't there been any justice for any of Dagger's victims? She seduces men with sex at parties she's not supposed to be at, and she drugs them, and when the kids and the men wake up, all their shit's gone. What about justice for them, huh? What about that, huh? 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 Yeah, that's what I thought. There ain't no justice for them. And of course, what this show wants to do is, they make all the men that she stole from look like scumbag rapists and assholes the entire time, because the screenwriters know, if they were actually decent people, it would make Dagger's character look like an asshole, which she is an asshole. You see, the story doesn't even consider what if, what if, what if. It just says these people are evil and every character that isn't the main character that they associate with that they aren't linked to by blood like their parents are automatically evil. All the cops are evil. All these other people are evil, Cloak is always right, and Dagger's always right, because reasons. Cloak and Dagger is a terrible show. It drags out the plot, most of the characters' problems could be solved if they had common sense instead of being edgy teenagers, and worst of all, none of these characters have any actual redeemable traits in any way possible. If you watched episode 1, then skip to episode 9, none of the characters have changed nor have any resolutions or outcomes to any of their problems, because every character is just so evil and they're so well connected in the political landscape, they're able just to get away with it. For example, they do catch the cop that actually killed Cloak's, I mean, yeah, Cloak's uh, brother, but it turns out he's able to get out of jail because, I don't know, reasons, and they killed that dude and shoved him in a refrigerator. This show is so dumb, and the worst of it all is episode 9. It wants to be this witty meta-commentary with them literally giving a lecture on the hero's journey, talking about how trauma defines who they are, making them stronger and weaker, and giving them weaknesses, explaining what they do and why they do it, but they're barely done anything in the entire show but fuck up people's lives while manorandering throughout the entire duration of 10 episodes. You don't have to watch Marvel's Cloak and Dagger. You're not missing anything special. It's just filler. It's not important. It's trash. The show doesn't do anything special, like I said. It's really just there just to be there. If you want to watch it, that's good on you, but I recommend that you don't. It's pretty bad. It's just a bunch of social justice commentary rammed down your ears while simultaneously watch these characters meander throughout the duration of the show. <laughs> Oh, I'm a man, I'm a man, I'm a man, I'm a man.